らよ俺は海賊王になるんだよ偉くなりてえわけじゃねえ親分や大海賊じゃなくてもいいだろお前らが困ったら俺たちを呼べ必ず助けに行くから一緒にミンゴと戦ったことは忘れねえよなんか、言いてえことが分かってきたべルフィ先輩にとっての海賊王の意味が、えらいんでねくて、自由自由、自由それがルフィ先輩の、だま俺、なおさらあんたに骨食べさ、ルフィ先輩あははは h my reluctant journey in watching One Piece, I've always thought that the series was much too long and much too broad to paint by interest. A story about pirates seemed like any other story out there in the same category. However, watching and reading the first 100 chapters and episodes, I began to notice a change. A change in not only the story, but my viewing experience as well. It's well worth noting that the first 100 chapters of One Piece were slow, in my frank opinion. But the more I pressed forward in the story, the more I progressed. The more my opinion of the series shifted for the better. Looking back on it, One Piece has been going on for about 20 years now, and that to me was an unappealing drawback. But now that I'm more familiar with this revolutionary series, I can fully comprehend why its longevity actually helped the series and not hinder it, like in some cases of Naruto Shippuden or Hunter x Hunter. It's because of Oda's deliberate choice to fully take his time to write and craft each individual aspect of One Piece's world that it genuinely benefits the series, and it allows it to live up to his name as the king of shonen manga. One Piece is regarded as many Western fans as top 10 manga series because of the impact it's had on many people. Additionally, I should also say that it's affected me as well personally. The main reason why I became so intrigued with the series is simple as this Monkey D. Luffy. First, I want to share out that Luffy in the first few dozen chapters was not my favorite character at all. In fact, I almost despised him because, well, for the most part, he was this cliche character. He exhibited everything that I had already seen in the likes of Naruto or Goku. Luffy. Is childish. He is selfish to a degree, he is greedy, and he is a little too ambitious. And not to mention, he's not the brightest apple in the bunch. That's what I originally thought. However, I now realize his character is much more than that. As I began to realize, in fact, out of my top 10 favorite shonen protagonists, he ranks number 4, just barely under number 3, which is. Edward Elric of Full Metal Alchemist. One Piece's appeal heavily relies on 50% of the characters, 30% of the world building, and 20% being the plot. In my initial thoughts about Luffy, he was just the kind of character who would get too annoying to tolerate about 50 episodes later. It was just mostly him goofing off and winning many of his battles for little to no reason other than the fact that he was a natural enemy of the world government. Being a pirate, of course, it's only natural. But as I said, he is one of my favorite characters for a reason. Yeah, Luffy is childish. Yeah, Luffy is incredibly strong. Yeah, Luffy wants to be the king of the pirates. But it's not just so black and white as it may seem. Luffy actually exhibits and symbolizes so much more than that. In fact, I would argue that Luffy solely makes or breaks the entirety of the One Piece franchise, which all main protagonists should do. If Luffy was the kind of character who was so uninteresting that he could literally be killed off and nothing about the story would change, then One Piece would have concluded back in episode 2 of the anime. It's because Luffy is such an interesting character that One Piece has gone on for so long as it did. Without him, there wouldn't be any of the infamous arcs such as, like, Alabasta. Skypea, Water 7, Innie's Lobby, Thriller Bark, Sabaody Archipelago, Amazon Lily, a m p e l Down, Marine Ford, Fishman Island, Dress Rosa, Punk Hazard, Zo, e Whole Cake Island, and even Wano. Luffy impacts the whole course of the series, 
he is the captain, so without Luffy, the Straw Hats wouldn't exist. Zoro would have been executed by the Marines. Nami probably would still be drawing maps for Arlong looking for a way out. Sanji cooking on the Baratie with Zeph. Rushab most likely would have been in trouble with the Marines or some other pirate gang because of his bluffs and lies. Chopper on Drum Island practicing to be a doctor. Robin eventually hunted down by the government. Frankie still at Water 7. Brooke still trapped on the ghost ship at Thriller Bark. Have you noticed a recurring theme throughout all of that? Every straw hat has suffered a painful loss or has had a tragic backstory, but it's because of Luffy's personality, his nature, his ideals, his strength, and his ambitions that all of them were able to leave their past behind and set out at sea to achieve their dreams. No matter how many times they were told it was pointless, that they, that they would die trying, that it didn't exist, that they weren't good enough. No matter the obstacles, Luffy became the beacon of hope, the ray of light within their darkness that saved the Straw Hats from either themselves or for someone else. He never told them that they couldn't do it. In fact, he encouraged them. He even said, you want to achieve your dreams? You want to do this? You want to do that? Come with me. We'll all do it together. And we'll have a fun adventure. It'll be great. You know, Luffy may not be smart, he may not act like a captain, if anyone, it's probably Nami. He may not understand anything you say to him. He may not listen and he may not care. But no matter what Luffy does, he will always look out for one of his crewmates. He'll always look out for them. The ones he care about most is Nakama. Luffy is not a hero. But rather, I would say he's just a savior in some eyes. He saves and he helps people regardless of their race, their size, their gender, their beliefs. Luffy is a child, yes, but it's because of his childish nature. The kind of nature that doesn't care if you're a fish man. He thinks you're cool. He doesn't care if you're a skeleton with an afro. You can sing, play violin, and tell jokes. You're cool. He doesn't care if you're a dangerous viral hunter or assassin. He doesn't care if you're wanted by marines, as long as you can help in anyway and join his crew. Then, you're cool. To do the things he can't, to compensate for what he lacks, to be his right-hand man, swordsman, to be his archaeologist, because he's just not that smart, then you're cool. If you can heal his wounds and give him all the beat he wants, you're cool. If you can shoot at things others can't, if you can lie, if you can repair or navigate a ship, you're cool. You get the memo yet? Luffy, in essence, is a small child in a young man's body. As long as you have the will to help him and others, you're practically friends. Luffy has befriended a princess, a fishman, a mermaid, a starfish, a mink bunny, criminals, and even went as far as punch a celestial dragon because he befriended someone who is feared and ostracized by all. That very same person previously worked for Arlong, the fishman who hurt his own Nakama. Luffy, nevertheless, gains friends and followers no matter where he goes because he is the kind of person who embodies their ideals, their beliefs, and that is freedom. Luffy saved the people of Alabasta from oppression, saved Nami from Arlong, saved the Barati and from other pirates, saved Zoro from the Marines, saved Robin from not only the government, but from herself as well, saved Brook in, from an endlessly floating ship of 50 years worth of isolated hell, and last but not least, an attempt to save his older brother Ace from execution. To free Ace, Luffy was willing to sacrifice his own hands poison against Magellan, free countless prisoners, including Crocodile who we previously had an encounter with on Alabasta, go through all of Impel Down's levels of hell, facing starvation, frostbite, wolves, demon guards, heat and near death, to the point he was willing to shorten his lifespan of just 10 years so that he could be healed by Ivankov to save his brother. And when he couldn't even make it in time? 
Luffy didn't give up. He went to Marine Forge to save his brother, ignoring the imminent perilous fate that awaited them there. Monkey D. Luffy is not the man who saves all because he's a hero. Monkey D. Luffy only inspires all to let him help them in some way. Luffy doesn't care if you're a god. He doesn't care if you're a warlord. He doesn't care if you're a Yonko or an admiral. He could care less what you do or what you are in the world. Uh, shut up! You don't know! You don't even know me! I know what you're up to. You want to be the king, huh? First, you gotta go through me! Got it! Got it! Got it! He's competing with what? We're done for! <laughs> but oh boy, if you make his navigator cry, prepare to have your ass kicked. <laughs> but furthermore, Luffy is such a nuanced character that whatever he wants, he wants, and he'll try his best to get it. And if he doesn't get it, he'll raise hell. If there's something his crew can't handle, he'll take it upon himself to do it for them. Luffy was willing to starve to death if Sanji never cooked for him again. He didn't want to eat anything other than Sanji's cooking. He even admitted that he could never become the king of the pirates without Sanji. Without Nami, Luffy can't travel the seas without falling into the ocean and drowning wherever he went. Without Zoro to take all the pain away from him during Thriller Bark, he would have most likely died truly after. Without Robin's intellect, the Straw Hats wouldn't know a thing about the world. Without Chopper to help nurse the frozen Robin and Luffy back to health, they would have died at the hands of Aokiji. Without Usopp, Luffy wouldn't have had a brother like crewmate who's closest to him. Without Frankie, the Straw Hats wouldn't have nearly as nice of a ship as the Thousand Sunny, and it would have sustained so much damage in a short amount of time that the crew probably would have been stranded on an island. Without Brooke, Luffy would probably not have nearly as much fun as he wants. He wouldn't be able to sing as much, to dance as much. He did that anyways before before they met Brooke, but that was when they really started to have fun and the ship became more lively. The crew, everyone's spirits was always raised. You could always count on Brooke to be there whenever people are feeling down to raise their spirits and make them smile again. I think, in my opinion, it all comes down to who you're surrounded by. Luffy needs his crew in order to have a grand adventure and find the One Piece to become king of the pirates and they need him in return and they're supposed to make up for whatever he lacks that's their role as a crew and in turn you know he guides them to their dreams it's more of Luffy is the character who instead of being influenced by the world he's the one who does the influencing he influences the world and that's what makes bounties in my opinion one piece so appealing, especially Luffy's in particular. Soge King. Ano hata uchinuke. Yokai. That's why you're about to start! It's not all about the One Piece, as a lot of people may think. Luffy could care less if there was a treasure at all. In fact, it's more about the journey and the people you meet along the way that make the journey worthwhile. He not only needs his crew, but he wants his crew to be there at the end of the Grand Line, finding the One Piece with him. If they're not there to see it, Luffy would rather die. If Luffy dies on his journey, he wouldn't be regretful. If he dies, then that's that. All that matters to him is that he got the experience as much as he could with the life that he had. Mm -hmm.
できるかどうかじゃないえなりたいからなるんだえ海賊王になるって俺が決めたんだからそのために戦って死ぬんなら別にいい<笑>さーてと腹も膨れたし船でももらってっかな頼めばくれるかな気前のいいやつだといいんだけど So yeah He is childish and he is selfish much like a kid but to contrast my earlier impressions of him It's due to Luffy's innocent nature to not care about race, to not care about where you came from. And all that matters is if you can help him, that he is able to gain such a following. People are drawn to him instantly because he embodies freedom. Freedom lies in every aspect of the overall narrative. Luffy wants to become the king of the pirates because he believes that he is the one who is freest of all. He doesn't want to be a hero, nor a conqueror, not a ruler. He just wants to be free. In a world of oppressive government systems and warlords, pirates are constantly being hunted down with bounties as high as one billion barriers. Luffy is a great protagonist because he's a pirate, because he is the good guy in our eyes. In his eyes, if you hurt people, you're bad. And in most cases, that tends to be the world government. If you can give him meat, you're alright. If you can atone for your sins and your past mistakes and show him a good time and help him in some way, you're in a coma now. <laughs> he doesn't necessarily see in black and white, but it's because of the story that we follow a character who is technically the antagonist. Of the world government, even though he's the one who just wants to have fun and help people, that it's essential to understand why Luffy is so amazingly likable. He's very similar to characters like Goku, whose goal is to be stronger and protect his friends. That's it. That's it. Luffy is inspired by Goku. Goku doesn't always consider if what he's doing is right or wrong, he just does it. Same could be said about Luffy, except Luffy only knows that if you get in my way, I'll kick your ass. But if you don't get in my way, then I don't care what happens to you. Meanwhile, Goku tries to help everyone as much as possible, including people he doesn't even know. Characters of this archetype are appealing because they inspire others to do the same. Luffy represents freedom because he is able to risk his life for his friends and have fun. Lastly, I'd like to go over briefly about Luffy's devil fruit powers. And why is because it has much to do with him as a character. It embodies freedom physically. Since Luffy ate the gummo gummo no mi, or gum gum fruit in short, his body is made of rubber and he lost the ability to swim forever. So to have an ability such as being a rubber man seems very bland and straightforward, right? I'd say, but on the contrary, it's actually quite flexible. Literally and metaphorically speaking, Luffy can stretch his arms, his legs, etc., without having any strain on his body. He can do things that others, if given this ability, would never even think of. Anyone else would just stretch their arms and legs. On the other hand, Luffy takes his power to a whole new level and comes up with techniques such as Gear 2nd, Gear 3rd, and Gear 4th. By speeding up the blood flow in all or parts of his body, he is able to fight with enhanced strength, speed, and mobility than before. With Gear 3rd, very much like a rubber balloon, Luffy pumps air into his arm or legs as it enlarges to the point its size is of a giant's fist. Note, Luffy took initial uh, inspiration from his enemies, such as Gear 2nd and members of CP9. As opposed to Gear's second speed, he exchanges the speed for a heavy and powerful strike to compensate for that lack of initial strength to Gear 2's speed to take over for the pure brute force. Now, I won't be mentioning the aspect of hockey in conjunction with Luffy's gum gum powers, but just know that he's able to do many other things that characters with this ability and even people in real life would never even think of. 
that's part of what makes Oda such a genius, in my opinion at least. As you can see, Luffy's power is extraordinarily flexible and embodies freedom in itself. The fact that he has enough liberty and creativity to come up with all gears in combination with armament hockey, excluding Conqueror's hockey, is fascinating. And in cessation, take a minute to think about the similarities between Goldie Roger and Monkey D. Luffy. What does Luffy share in common with the previous King of the Pirates? The man he admires. Luffy's answer to Rayleigh when he's asked how he intends to conquer the Grand Line is simply that he does not intend to conquer it, but rather, the person with the most freedom in the ocean would be the Pirate King. This brought a smile to Rayleigh's face and Shaggy's face, seeming the unmistakable likeness to Roger and Luffy just as Shanks saw. Smoker saw the smile Luffy gave off to mirror that of Goldie Rogers 22 years ago, and considered Luffy to be a potential danger to the world. Besides the mermaid of legend, the only other people who seem to be able to hear the Sea King have been Monkey D. Luffy and Goldie Roger. The latter was said to be able to hear the voice of all things. The will of D, much later, during the Straw Hats Pirates departure for Fishman Island, it was revealed by Silver's Rayleigh that the straw hat originally belonged to Goldie Roger. And last, but certainly not least, in the manga and anime, Monkey D. Luffy's straw hat is the main symbol of the entire series and is the origin of his nickname, Straw Hat Luffy. I would also claim that those who wear the straw hat are the ones who deserve to become the Pirate King. They can have all the treasure in the world, but all that matters to them is having a grand adventure and a crew to share it with. That, in my opinion, is why Goldie Roger hit the One Piece. He wanted others to experience the joys of being a pirate and living a life worth living. If you are only concerned about finding the One Piece, you'll probably die just by trying because you were too impatient and missed the entire point of even setting out to sea. The world's a cool place. It doesn't have room for those who just want to be greedy and selfish. It's all about the adventure. That's why all who follow Luffy truly believe he will be the one to find the One Piece and become King of the Pirates. For those reasons alone, that is why Luffy is not just thematically, but also physically a personification of freedom. Freedom in ideals, freedom in beliefs, freedom in adventure, freedom in power, freedom from oppression, and lastly, freedom in one piece. <laughs>